Welcome, Wizard Apprentices. This is episode five of Visual Workflow, and we're going to take a look at loops and fast elements. So let's talk about loops. There are two different types of loops. The first type is simply where you loop back upon an element that's already in your flow. Then we have the type of loop that usually works with fast lookups, where you're dealing with a series of records. The entirety of the collection goes into the loop and then you loop through each record until finally you leach the last one and you exit. So let's think about how we can use this. So let's say we have a whole bunch of products in our opportunity and we want to be able to create an asset potentially for each product. So we're going to loop through the products and ask the user if they want to create an asset and then finally create the asset. This is going to look a little complicated. Uh, and so in this particular episode, I'm going to have the flow already created, but we'll take a look at the important elements that we have not used before and talk about those. So here's the flow we have created. Uh, you'll notice there's a few elements here that we have not used before, including an assignment and fast lookup and fast create, as well as the loop. So let's take a quick look at what this flow actually does. We start with an assignment. An assignment is simply an element that allows us to assign a value to various variables. In this situation, my flow is designed to work off in an opportunity. Since I don't have the opportunity actually calling the flow, I am going to manually assign what the opportunity ID will be for our test. Now this is really nice when you're building a flow and you want to test a flow that you're going to have called say from a button on your opportunity, but it, it's really not a good idea to be hard coding these IDs in your flow. This is just to get us started. So when the flow begins, we start with our record lookup. We've looked at this up in the past. And here I'm simply grabbing the account ID from the opportunity based on the ID that's been passed into the flow. Now we have fast lookup. Fast lookup is something that we have not looked at in the past. The difference between doing a fast lookup and a record lookup is with fast lookups are typically intended to, when you have more than one record that you want to return. In this situation, we could have multiple opportunity line items. So I'm looking up the opportunity line items based on the ID of the opportunity, and then I am assigning it to a variable. You can assign it to two different types of variables. You can assign it to an S object variable, which means you're looking at a single record, or you can assign it to an S object collection variable, which is more than one record. From there, you can define what fields do you want to pull in to each record that is returned. And here I'm doing some basic ones, the ID, quantity, product ID, the total price. And you'll notice I have a couple different fields here that are product name, product ID with text at the end that are custom fields. And I'll talk about that in a little bit later. Once we have our collection, we do our loop. The loop element is very basic. You give it a name, you simply state, this is what you want to loop through. This can be an S object collection or it could be a variable collection. You can specify the order. And finally, you can define what will be the name of the variable for each individual item in the record. So as you're going through the loop, each time you go through the loop, the record that it's currently on will be this variable. In this case, it's just an S object variable. We've looked at the screen in, in the past. This particular screen is very simple. It's simply going to ask a question. Do you want to create an asset for this? Uh, please note that I misspelled the word asset in my hurry here. And we are going to ask yes or no. Do you want to create the asset or not? We have our decision element. We looked at decision elements in a past episode, and simply here we're saying, yes, we want to create or no, we don't. Now I have two different assignments elements. The first assignment here is assigning the values that I want for this particular asset that's going to be created from this particular opportunity product. This works as if you're assigning a particular variable. You're simply going through an S object variable and saying this field is going to have this value. The second assignment takes the S object variable for that asset and puts it in a collection of other as assets. Uh, the reason I do this in a separate assignment is just for my own sanity. You could theoretically do it in one, but I like having it segregated this way. 
Now, we are returning back to our loop element in two different places. First, if the user says, no, I don't want to create an actual asset. And second, when we have assigned the asset. The reason we are not doing the create within the loop is a protection. We do not want to do record crates or fast crates or doing fast lookups, fast updates, so forth when you're within a loop. And that's because of governor limits that are currently in place. You don't want to accidentally go over those limits and cause an error. So you try to do everything as one big update. And that's what we're doing here in this fast create. Fast create works very similar to record create, which we've looked at in a previous episode, except for it will create multiple records at the same time. In this situation, you're passing over an S object collection to say, go create all the records that are particular that are in this collection. You could also do this with a single S object variable. I find typically that if you're going to deal with multiple records, you're using fast creates, fast updates, fast lookups. If you're going to deal with a single record at a time, you're better off using the record create updates and lookups. We have a few other things here that we've talked about before. We have a debug screen for our faults whenever we have a lookup or a create. So let's take a look at how this will actually run. I have an opportunity created here, and we can see what we have a series of magical devices that are being sold. And some of these I may want to have an asset created, and some don't. Just to show that I have nothing up to my sleeve, here's the account for our opportunity. You can see we have no assets on. So let's go run our flow. Click the Run button, and we're going to present it. Hey, do you want to create an asset for this project, Magic Missile? Sure, let's create that asset. Do you want to create an asset for this product, which is Wizard Hat? Yes, absolutely. You know, I don't want an asset for Wizard Robes, uh, mainly because of the fact that I think a robe and a hat kind of goes together anyways. And finally, do we want to create an asset for the Wizard Staff? Sure, let's go create those. And now I'm presented with, hey, your assets have been created. You may now leave the flow. Because we're testing the flow, clicking finishes is just going to take us to the start of the flow. So let's go back to our account and refresh the page. And you can see the three assets have been created and it's been pulling in information directly off of our opportunity products. So remember when I said we'll come back to this? Here we are. So there's currently a bug within visual workflow, whereas you're using fast lookup and you're pulling in fields that are technically formula fields in the system for some reason, Flow doesn't recognize that the value has been set. So I'm cheating here. Uh, you'll notice that I have the product name and that's because the product name is actually a formula field that is grabbed by the opportunity product based off of product two ID. So the way that I get around this bug is I create extra fields on the opportunity product, in this case, product name text. It's just a text field. Then I use a workflow rule to actually populate the information each time the product gets created or edited. That way I can use this text field, which is on the opportunity product itself, and not have to worry about grabbing um, a formula field and getting an error. Uh, the Some of the other fields that you would have to do this with is if you're trying to grab the list price, the product family, the product code from the product, even though they may appear on the opportunity product when you're looking at the page, in reality, it's just a formula field that's being passed down. So this will also happen for any custom formulas you created. That's why we're having to use a text field here and then filled in with a workflow rule in order to do that. Now we could get around this another way, which would be just to grab the product two IDs and then go and do a separate lookup. But then that lookup would have to be within our loop itself. And I wanted to avoid that simply to protect myself from governor limits. So that concludes our loopy video for today. Thanks for watching everyone. Remember the magic is out there. It's yours for the taking. And please leave a like or comment. I love to hear you guys feedback as well as Please tell me what else would you like me to see? If you would like specific use cases for how to use Flow, or if you have a use case in mind, but you're not quite sure how to build it, please leave a comment and let me know about that. And I'll love to take a look at those for a future episode.